Hi, this is Dan Harvey. I decided I would uh, give a little update here to my twin troller. I showed you what I did to the trailer, but I haven't shown you what I've done to the boat. Some of you have been asking, so I'm about to give you the tour. I'm in Michigan right now. We're set up doing a little fishing. As you can see, my truck camper in the background. That's my big boat. And there is my twin troller. It gets me into some of these lakes I can't get into with my big boat, and it's really handy. So I'm gonna give you a quick idea of uh, what that's about here. We'll start in the front here. Um, I think I've covered everything on the trailer as far as what I've done to make things different and better. Um, so I'm not gonna waste any time going over that. But I did wanna show you a mount. I had this over on the side for my transducer and it's longer than I probably really need. But I found with the longer ram mount that you see right here, it uh, puts that fish finder right up in front of me where I can see what's going on. I also have the option of moving it on my boat. I put myself a long enough cable here. I've got a, a ram mount right there, and you'll see that in a second. I also put it back here, because I never know if I'm gonna be running from the front of the boat or the back of the boat. Depends on the guests that I have with me. The more experienced they are, the more I put them in the back of the boat. The less experienced they are, I put them in the front of the boat. So they can't interfere with me or anything like that. The other thing I did is uh, I added another battery. So instead of going directly to the primary battery, I found I was getting less interference if I just bought myself another little battery. And just to double check for in interference, I put another choke on it. Uh, you can find videos on YouTube on how to do the choke. Originally, my transducer was mounted here. Um, it was extended out over the rear. And for down imaging, it was okay. But for side imaging, it was really screwing with my picture. Now what you don't see here is the Honda 2.3 outboard that normally sits here. I decided not to bring it. I was going to try to rig up a way to put my micro power pole on this boat. I have a micro power pole on my big boat. As you can see, I've got two of them and I love it. I push a button and down this eight foot pole goes and it anchors me where I want to be. So <clears throat> I am going to figure out a way to put a bracket on here mount a power pole on the rear and still allow me to raise and lower that outboard motor. Haven't quite got the engineering down yet. I'm gonna build some prototypes out of wood, then probably have me some, make me, uh, my fabricator make me one out of aluminum, probably quarter plate aluminum so I can mount to the rear of the boat. As you can see, I've got boat buckles, uh, probably overkill, but because I travel on the interstate a lot, you hit some pretty big bumps sometimes. I didn't want things flopping around back there. So the way I compensated for that was I put these little tie downs down, a little strap to keep the back in where it's supposed to be. I tie it off on my seat so the wind doesn't get flapping the thing and beat it to death. Uh, you'll also see that I put a little case in here to keep my title to my boat in and uh, my boat insurance. Uh, I hang that right inside there even with the outboard on there. That's pretty easy. I leave my little plug in there. As you can see, I've got it plugged in right now, charging the battery. Uh, I did decide to add an LED. <laughs> it's just got alligator clips on the end of it. I run it up on the battery post, but it is so stinking cool. Uh, see if I can get a close up of it. Uh, and super cheap. But at a glance, I can now look and see what the condition of my battery is. I'm no longer guessing what it is. Uh, I just know exactly. I don't have it hooked up to the fish finder to this battery, so I can't do it from the fish finder. Um, we added a cutoff switch. I don't believe that was part of the original package that came with it, but I did want a battery cutoff so I could cut the power to this thing. The other thing I did, and I saw this from some of the other people online, is I got these kayak, uh, what do you call them, little holders. I think they're 12 inch. I put them on each of my seats and you'll see that I pop riveted those babies. And there were some that the pop rivets didn't actually work very well. I think it's over on this side. Let me walk over here. Yeah, right here, where I actually put a, a stainless steel bolt and washer through. You can do it either way. You could do it with pop rivets uh, or you can do it with bolts like I did. And you can kind of see how I just fastened it in there.
And what's nice is it allows me to store this tackle box, which is a 2500 series. Uh, it kind of fits in there kind of nicely. I've got crankbaits in this one. And that meant I bought about four of these little bags that holds these 2500 series tackle boxes. Um, I use a lot of artificial baits and stuff when I'm fishing. I use a lot of trout magnets. Lately, I've been doing what's called drop shot fishing. Uh, for bluegills, I do a lot of pan fishing. And it's just real handy. I, I, I label it by species, so it makes it super easy. Uh, the other thing you'll notice here is my live well. <laughs> How you like that for a live well, huh? So, it's pretty nice, five gallon bucket. These tops you can buy separate. They're just a little separate thing and it's quite handy because it's also got doodad holders on there. But it just so happens to fit right up under there nice and tight and I've never had an issue with that thing blowing out. What you don't see on there is my bubbler. It hangs over here on the outside. There's a hole right here where the hose goes through and the stone is down on the inside, makes bubbles. If I'm gonna be on hot weather, I'll freeze ahead of time a water bottle and if you put a little salt in there and freeze it that way, it'll stay cold longer and it'll keep that water nice and cool for the fish. If you don't catch many at the end of the day, you could decide to turn them loose or you may want to give them to somebody standing on the dock as you come in so that they've got fish for supper. Uh, the other thing you'll see over here on the side, I've kind of passed it a couple times. You'll see my little lanyard. I use this for trout fishing, but you know what's so darn handy about these things? Let me get over here where you can see what I got. I got scissors for cutting braid. I've got nippers. I've got little forceps hanging off. Not just forceps, these are cool forceps. Check that color out, huh? We got a leader straightener. I've got different types of tippet on there that I'll tie on the end of my four pound test. I usually go down to two pound when I'm bluegill fishing. And uh, this is my tackle box around my neck. I love it. Absolutely makes things super easy for me. Uh, the other thing you'll see here is my Scotty rod holders. I have two different kinds. I don't have the other kind out right now, but I got one for my fly rod and Scotty makes one for your regular poles. These store my rods so much nicer, so much easier than the ones that came on the boat. I lost a beautiful rod and reel and I actually had to get a diving team to come help me find it because it was worth more for me to do that than it was to give up my rod and reel, but I did find it. Hallelujah. Uh, but I solved the problem of them ever falling out again by using this type of a rod holder. Uh, let's see, what else do we do to the outside? Oh, a positioning sensor. I did add a positioning sensor just to make it more accurate to know exactly which way my boat was pointed. And that goes with my Hummingbird Helix 7, in case you're wondering. This is the fish finder that I've got, and it's upside down because uh, I had it set for ice fishing. I took it out of the box, just stuck it in here so I could film with the thing, but I'll be, you know, loosening the crank cranks on each side and flipping it around, so that's no big deal. But anyhow, just wanted y'all to be able to see how I've got it set up. Um, the other thing that I'll do is I'll take and clean out these tracks periodically because they do get a full of a lot of dirt and grime uh, Just to make sure those chairs slide easily And I also put dialectic grease between my connectors here Because I'm lazy. I leave it in my boat quite a bit and I don't take them out And it just makes sure that I'm not going to have issues with my electronics when I go to use them If I am going to be doing any lengthy travels like several hundred miles Many times I'll stick these in the back of my truck. And I found that if you use a little screwdriver and stick it in that hole right there, push it down and wiggle this back and forth, those things will slide in and out a whole lot easier than other ways I've experimented with. You guys got a better idea to getting them things on and off, uh, I'm all ears. And as you can see, again, my connectors, I gave myself enough cord to be able to go up and around. Put my little lead rope up here for unhooking it i can do it solo by using the little clip method attaching it to your trailer all right kind of scanning here to see what else i did to my bow to make it nice uh, i think that's about it you got any questions um 
Guys, I'm pretty busy. I'm up here fishing, so I don't have time at the moment to get around to posting all these little doodads that I did. Oh, I forgot to mention the transducer. This transducer, you'll notice I put it on an old broom pole. It was actually one of those extendable paint poles, or I think it was actually a floor sweeping brush, and the brush died, and I saved the pole, and I thought, huh, that'll make a good bracket for my for my fish finder. Because I do side imaging, I'm looking for bluegill beds. And this pole needs to be raised up a little bit. And I'll probably take and cut the top of it off and make it shorter and then put this cap back on it. But uh, you can see the little mount system. It's all RAM stuff you can get. Um, I think the kit that I bought was actually the transducer hole, or excuse me, um, trolling motor stand holder assist or something to that effect. And it was mainly for a big boat, but when I saw it, I thought, well, shoot, I can use that for making a way to hang my transducer. Now, does that mean I have to take it on and off every time I load and unload the boat? Yep, it does. But if you're wanting to use side imaging, find bluegill beds like I do, I find I don't get any disturbance from the water by doing it this way. When I had it mounted over here, coming off the back with a little kayak transducer mount, I was just getting so much turbulence from the motors coming off the the boat it just wasn't working for me now maybe you guys have figured out a way to get it to work and if that's the case please let me know but right now um that's what i'm doing so there you have it uh my twin trawler and in case you're wondering about my other boat that's a tracker all fish 2006 model i bought that boat uh yeah i bought it new I just went through and upgraded all the electronics on it. I know you're probably seeing a bunch of stuff hanging off from it. I paid more for the electronics upgrade than I, I did the boat motor and package when I bought it. It's amazing. These computers are expensive. And I also added steps to the front for old people like me that need to get up and down it. Anyhow, there you guys go. Twin troller. Love it. Get in all these little places. I can't get in with my big boat. Uh, just put my wading shoes on and away I go. All right, hope this helps, gives you guys some ideas, something to think about. See ya. Happy trails.